Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayekadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of kings and Lord of lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, we're continuing our study in the book, Absolute Surrender, and today we are on the final chapter. Now, if you're just joining us, I would recommend that you go back and listen to The Road to Calvary, part one, two, and three, then listen to the book, Humility, and finally join us in the book, Absolute Surrender. Well, as I've stated, today is going to be the final chapter, and it is titled, You Are the Branches, an Address to Christian Workers. Our text today is from John chapter 15 and verse 5. When Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Everything depends on our being in Christ. If I want good apples, I must have a good apple tree. And if I care for the health of the apple tree, the apple tree will give me good apples. And it is just so with our Christian life and work. If our life with Christ be right, all will come right. There may be the need of instruction and suggestion and help and training in the different departments of the work, and all that has value. But in the long run, the greatest essential is to have the full life in Christ. In other words, to have Christ in us, working through us. I know how much there often is to disturb us or to cause anxious questionings, but the Master has such a blessing for every one of us and such perfect peace and rest and such joy and strength if we can only come into and be kept in the right attitude toward him. I will take my text again from the parable of the vine and the branches in John 15, 5, where Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. And I want to focus specifically on the words, you are the branches. What a simple thing that is to be a branch, the branch of a tree or the branch of a vine. The branch grows out of the vine or out of the tree, and there it lives and grows, and in due time it bears fruit. It has no responsibility except just to receive from the root and stem sap and nourishment. And if we only, by the Holy Spirit, knew our relationship to Jesus Christ, our work would be changed into the brightest and most heavenly thing upon earth. Instead of there ever being soul weariness or exhaustion, our work would be like a new experience, linking us to Jesus as nothing else can. For alas, is it not often true that our work comes between us and Jesus? What a folly! The very work that he has to do in me, and I for him, I take up in such a way that it separates me from Christ. Many a laborer in the vineyard has complained that he has too much work and not time for close communion with Jesus and that his usual work weakens his inclination for prayer and that his too much intercourse with men darkens the spiritual life. This is a sad thought that the bearing of fruit should separate the branch from the vine. That must be because we have looked upon our work as something other than the branch bearing fruit. May God deliver us from every false thought about the Christian life. Now let's look at a few thoughts about this blessed branch life. In the first place, it is a life of absolute dependence. The branch has nothing. It just depends upon the vine for everything. Absolute dependence is one of the most solemn and precious of thoughts. A great German theologian wrote two large volumes some years ago 
to show that the whole of Calvin's theology is summed up in that one principle of absolute dependence upon God. And he was right. Another great writer has said that absolute, unalterable dependence upon God alone is the essence of the religion of angels and should be that of men also. God is everything to the angels, and he is willing to be everything to the Christian, hallelujah. If I can learn every moment of the day to depend upon God, everything will come right. You will get the higher life if you depend absolutely upon God at all times. Now, here we find it with the vine and branches. Every vine you ever see, every bunch of grapes that comes upon your table, let it remind you that the branch is absolutely dependent upon that vine. The vine has to do the work and the branch enjoys the fruit of it. What has the vine to do? It has to do a great work. It has to send its roots out into the soil and hunt under the ground. The roots often extend a long way out, and it's doing this for nourishment, to drink in the moisture, put certain elements of manure in certain directions, and the vine sends its roots there. And then in its roots or stems, it turns the moisture and manure into that special sap, which is to make the fruit that is to be born. The vine does the work and the branch has just to receive from the vine the sap, which is changed into grapes. You see, Jesus is the vine. He draws his strength from the Father, and through that produces within us his spirit, or the fruit. I have been told that at Hampton Court, London, there is a vine that sometimes bore a couple of thousand bunches of grapes, and people were astonished at its large growth and rich fruitage. However, it was discovered what was the cause of it. Not so very far away runs the river Thames, and the vine had stretched its roots away hundreds of yards under the ground until it had come to the riverside. And there, in all the rich slime of the riverbed, it had found rich nourishment, and it had obtained much moisture. And the roots had drawn the sap all that distance up and up into the vine. And as a result, there was the abundant rich harvest. The vine had the work to do. And the branches had just to depend upon the vine to do its work and receive what it gave. Is that literally true of our Lord Jesus? Must we understand that when we have to work, when we have to address a Bible class or to go out and visit the poor, that all the responsibility of the work is on Christ? That is exactly what Christ wants you to understand. Christ wants that in all your work, the very foundation should be the simple blessed consciousness. Christ must care for all. And how does he fulfill the trust of that dependence? He does it by sending down the Holy Spirit, not now and then as a special gift, for remembering the relationship between the vine and the branches is such that hourly, daily, unceasingly, there is the living connection maintained. The sap does not flow for a time and then stop and then flow again, but from moment to moment, the sap flows from the vine to the branches. And just so, our Lord Jesus wants us to take that blessed position as his workers and morning by morning and day by day and hour by hour and step by step in every work, we have to go out just to abide before him in the simple utter helplessness of one who knows nothing and is nothing and can do nothing. Oh, beloved workers, study that word nothing. You sometimes sing, oh, to be nothing, nothing. But have you really studied that word nothing and prayed about that word every day and worshiped God in the light of it? Do you know the blessedness of that word nothing? If I am something, if you are something, then God is not everything. 
But when we become nothing, hallelujah, God becomes all. And the everlasting God in Christ can reveal himself fully. That is the higher life, friend. We need to become nothing. Someone has well said that the seraphim and cherubim are flames of fire because they know they are nothing. And they allow God to put his fullness and his glory and brightness into them. Oh, become nothing in deep reality. And as a worker for Jesus, study only one thing, to become poorer and lower and more helpless, to become nothing, that Christ may work all in you. Workers, here is your first lesson. Learn to be nothing. Learn to be helpless. The man who has got something is not absolutely dependent. But the man who has got nothing is absolutely dependent. Absolute dependence upon God is the secret of all power in work. The branch has nothing but what it gets from the vine. And you and I can have nothing but what we get from Jesus. Well, second, let us consider this. The life of the branch is not only a life of entire dependence, but of deep restfulness. We need, friends, to learn to rest in Jesus. Allow him to do his work. Now you may say, won't that make me slothful? I tell you, it will not. No one who learns to rest upon the living Christ can become slothful. For the closer your contact with Christ, the more of the spirit of his zeal and love will be born in upon you. But, oh, begin to work in the midst of your entire dependence by adding to that deep restfulness. A man sometimes tries and tries to be dependent upon Christ, but he worries himself about this absolute dependence. He tries and he cannot get it. But let him sink deep down into entire restfulness every day, and he will sing with the saints of old, In thy strong hand, I lay me down, so shall the work be done. For who can work so wondrously as the Almighty One? Worker, take your place every day at the feet of Jesus in the blessed peace and rest that come from the knowledge of knowing that you have no care. Your cares are His. Come, children of God, and understand that it is the Lord Jesus who wants to work through you. You complain of the want of fervent love. It will come from Jesus. He will give the divine love in your heart with which you can love others. That is the meaning of the assurance the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. And of that other word, the love of Christ constrains us. Christ can give you a fountain of love so that you cannot but help loving the most wretched and the most ungrateful or those who have wearied you hitherto. Rest in Christ who can give wisdom and strength and you do not know how that restfulness will often prove to be the very best part of your message. You plead with people and you argue and they get the idea there is a man arguing and striving with me. They only feel, here are two men dealing with each other. But if you will let the deep rest of God come over you, the rest in Christ Jesus, the peace and rest and holiness of heaven, that restfulness will bring a blessing to the heart, even more than the words you speak. And by doing so, you will produce fruit for the Lord Jesus. He used that word fruit often in his parables. He spoke first of fruit, and then of more fruit, and then of much fruit. Yes, you are ordained not only to bear fruit, but to bear much fruit. Jesus told us, herein is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit. In the first place, Christ said, I am the vine, and my father is the vine dresser, or the husbandman. He is the husbandman who has charge of me and you. 
and it is he who will watch over the connection between Jesus and his branches. And it is in his power through Christ that we are to bear fruit. Oh, Christians, you know this world is perishing for the want of workers. And it wants not only more workers, the workers are saying, some more earnestly than others, we need not only more workers, but we need our workers to have a new power, a different life, that we workers should be able to bring more blessing. Children of God, I appeal to you. You know what trouble you take, say, in the case of a sickness. You have a beloved friend apparently in danger of death, and one of his pleasantries in life was fresh fruit. And you know that nothing can refresh your friend so much as a few grapes, but they are out of season. Yet what trouble you will take to get fresh grapes as a means of pleasure to your dying friend. And oh, there are around you people who never go to church, and even more, so many who go to church but do not know Christ. And yet the heavenly grapes, the grapes of the heavenly vine are not to be had at any price, except as the child of God bears them out in his inner life in fellowship with Christ. Except the children of God are filled with the sap of the heavenly vine, except they are filled with the Holy Spirit and the love of Jesus, they cannot bear much of the real heavenly grape. We all confess there is a great deal of work, a great deal of preaching and teaching and visiting, a great deal of earnest effort of every kind, but there is not much manifestation of the power of God in it. What is wanting? There is wanting the close connection between the worker and the heavenly vine. Christ, the heavenly vine, has blessings that he could pour on tens of thousands who are perishing. Christ, the heavenly vine, has power to provide the heavenly grapes. But ye are the branches, and ye cannot bear heavenly fruit unless you are in close connection with Jesus Christ, abiding in in the vine. Now let us be careful here. Let us not confound or confuse work and fruit. There may be a good deal of work for Christ, yet it is not the fruit of the heavenly vine. Do not seek for work only. All oh, friends, study this question of fruit bearing. It means the very life and the very power and the very spirit and the very love within the heart of the Son of God. It means the heavenly vine himself coming into your heart and mine. You know there are different sorts of grapes, each with a different name, and every vine provides exactly that peculiar aroma and juice which gives the grape its particular flavor and taste. Just so, there is in the heart of Christ Jesus a life, and a love, and a spirit, and a blessing, and a power for men that are entirely heavenly and divine, and that will come down into our hearts. Stand in close connection with the heavenly vine and say, Lord Jesus, nothing less than the sap that flows through thyself, nothing less than the spirit of thy divine life is what we ask. Lord Jesus, I pray thee, let thy spirit flow through me in all my work for thee. I tell you again that the sap of the heavenly vine is nothing but the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the life of the heavenly vine. And what you must get from Christ is nothing less than a strong inflow of the Holy Spirit. You need it exceedingly. You want nothing more than that. Remember that. Do not expect Christ to give a bit of strength here and a bit of blessing yonder and a bit of help over there. As the vine does its work in giving its own peculiar sap to the branch, so expect Christ to give his own Holy Spirit into your heart, and then you will bear much fruit. And if you have only begun to bear fruit, and are listening to the word of Christ in the parable, more fruit, much fruit, 
Remember that in order that you should bear more fruit, you just require more of Jesus in your life and heart. We, as ministers of the gospel, we are in danger of getting into a condition of work, 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 and we pray over it. But the freshness and buoyancy and joy of the heavenly life are not always present. Let us seek to understand that the life of the branch is a life of much fruit, because it is a life that is rooted in Jesus, the living heavenly vine, Jesus our Messiah. As we close, let us consider that the life of the branch is also a life of close communion. Let us again ask, what has the branch to do? You know that precious, inexhaustible word that Christ used, abide. Your life is to be an abiding life. And how is the abiding to be? It is to be just like the branch in the vine, abiding every minute of the day. There are the branches in close communion, in unbroken communion with the vine from January to December. And cannot we live every day? It is to me an almost terrible thing that we should even ask the question. Cannot we live in abiding communion with the heavenly vine? You say you are so occupied with so many other things. You may have 10 hours hard work daily during which your brain has to be occupied with temporal things, but the abiding work is the work of the heart, not of the brain. The work of the heart clinging to and resting in Jesus, a work in which the Holy Spirit links us to Christ Jesus. Oh, do believe, friend, that deeper down than the brain, deep down in the inner life, you can abide in Jesus, so that every moment you are free, the consciousness will come, blessed Jesus, I am resting in thee. If you will learn for a time to put aside other work and to get into this abiding contract with the heavenly vine, you will find that fruit will come. What is the application to our life of this abiding communion, you may ask? What does it mean? It means close fellowship with Jesus in secret prayer. I am sure there are Christians who do long for the higher life and who sometimes have got a great blessing and have at times found a great inflow of heavenly joy and a great outflow of heavenly gladness. And yet, after a time, it has passed away. They have not understood that close, personal, actual communion with Christ is an absolute necessity for daily life. Take time to be alone with Jesus. Nothing in heaven or earth can free you from the necessity for that if you are to be happy and holy Christians. Oh, friends, how many Christians look upon it as a burden and a tax and a duty and a difficulty to be often alone with God? That is the great hindrance to our Christian life everywhere. We need more quiet fellowship with God. And I tell you in the name of the heavenly vine, Jesus the Christ, that you cannot be healthy branches, branches into which the heavenly sap can flow, branches that will bear much fruit unless you take plenty of time for communion with God. If you are not willing to sacrifice time to get alone with him and to give him time every day to work in you, and to keep up the link of connection between you and himself, he cannot give you that blessing of his unbroken fellowship. Jesus Christ asks you to live in close communion with him. Let every heart say, Oh Christ, it is this I long for. It is this I choose. And he will gladly give it to you. You must understand, friend, the life of the branch is a life of absolute surrender. This word, absolute surrender, is a great and solemn word, and I believe we do not understand its meaning. Friends, we need this absolute surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ. The more I speak, 
the more I feel that this is one of the most difficult points to make clear and one of the most important and needful points to explain what this absolute surrender is. It is often an easy thing for a man or number of men to come out and offer themselves up to God for entire consecration and to say, Lord, it is my desire to give up myself entirely to thee. That is of great value and often brings very rich blessing. But the one question we ought to study quietly is what is meant by absolute surrender. It means that as literally as Christ was given up entirely to God, I am given up entirely to Christ. Is that too strong for you? Well, some think so. Some think that can never be. That just as entirely and absolutely as Christ gave up his life to do nothing but seek the Father's pleasure and depend on the Father absolutely and entirely, I am to do nothing but to seek the pleasure of Christ. But that is actually true. Christ Jesus came to breathe his own spirit into us, to make us find our very highest happiness in living entirely for God, just as he did. Oh, beloved brothers and sisters, if this is the case, then should not we say, yes, by God's grace, I would live day by day that Christ may be able to do with me what he will. But here comes the terrible mistake that lies at the bottom of so much of our own religion. When a man thinks, I have my business, I have my family duties, I have my relationships as a citizen, and all this I cannot change. And now, alongside all this, you expect me to take in religion and service to God as something that will keep me from sin? God help me to perform my duties properly. This, friends, is not right. When Christ came, he came and bought the sinner with his blood. If there was a slave market where you live, and you were to buy a slave, should not you take that slave away to your own house from his old surroundings, and he would live in your house as your personal property, and you would order him about all the day? And if he were a faithful slave, he would live as having no will and no interest of his own. His one care would be to promote the well-being and honor of you, his master. Well, so in like manner, we who have been bought with the blood of Jesus have been bought to live every day with the one thought, how can I please my master? Oh, we find the Christian life so difficult because we seek for God's blessing while we live in our own will. We should be glad to live the Christian life according to our own liking. We make our own plans and we choose our own work. And then we ask the Lord Jesus to come in and take care that sin shall not conquer us too much and that we shall not go too far wrong. We ask him to come in and give us so much of his blessing. But our relationship to Jesus ought to be such that we are entirely at his disposal. And every day we come to him humbly and straightforwardly and say, Lord, is there anything in me that is not according to thy will, that has not been ordered by thee, or that is not entirely given up to thee? Oh, if we would wait and wait patiently, I tell you what the result would be. There would spring up a relationship between us and Jesus so close and so tender that we should afterward be amazed at how we formerly could have lived with the idea, I am surrendered to Christ. We should feel how far distant our intercourse with him had previously been and that he can and does indeed come and take actual possession of us and gives unbroken fellowship all the day. Jesus calls us to absolute surrender. I am not speaking now so much about the giving up of sins. There are people who need that. People who have got violent tempers, bad habits, and actual sins which they from time to time commit, and which they have never given up into the very bosom of the Lamb of God. 
I pray you, if you are branches of the living vine, do not keep one sin back from him. I know that there are a great many difficulties about this question of holiness. I know that all do not think exactly the same with regard to it. That would be to me a matter of comparative indifference. If I could see all that are honestly longing to be free from every sin. But I am even more afraid that unconsciously there are in hearts often compromises with the idea that we cannot be without sin, that we must sin a little every day, that we cannot help it. Oh, that people would actually cry to God, Lord, do keep me from sin. Give yourself utterly to Jesus, friends, and ask him to do his very utmost for you in keeping you from sin. And he will. There is a great deal in our work, in our church, and our surroundings, our families, that we have found in this world when we were born into it. And it has grown all around us, and we think that it is all right, that it cannot change. We do not come to the Lord Jesus and ask him about it. I advise you, Christian, bring everything into relationship with Jesus and say, Lord, everything in my life has to be in most complete harmony with my position as a branch of thee, the blessed vine. Let your surrender to Christ be absolute, absolute surrender to thee, O Lord is what I have chosen. And Christ will show you what is not according to his mind and lead you on to deeper and higher blessedness. In conclusion, let me gather up all in one sentence. Christ Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. In other words, I, the living one who have so completely given myself to you, am the vine. You cannot trust me too much. I am the almighty worker, full of a divine life and power. You are the branches of the Lord Jesus. If there is in your heart the consciousness that you are not a strong, healthy, fruit-bearing branch, not closely linked with Jesus, not living in him as you should be, then listen to Jesus when he says, I am the vine. I will receive you. I will draw you to myself. I will bless you. I will strengthen you. I will fill you with my spirit. I, the vine, have taken you to be my branches. I have given myself utterly to you. Children, give yourselves utterly to me. I have surrendered myself as God absolutely to you. I became man and died for you, that I might be entirely yours. Come and surrender yourselves entirely to be mine. And what shall our answer be? Oh, let it be a prayer from the depths of our heart that the living Christ may take each one of us and link us close to himself. Let our prayer be that he, the living vine, shall so link each of us to himself that we shall go away with our hearts singing. He is my vine, and I am his branch. I want nothing more. Now I have the everlasting vine. Then, when you get alone with him, worship and adore him, praise and trust him, love him, and wait for his love. That should be enough, friend that your soul would be satisfied. Let all glory, honor, and praise be unto the name of our King Jesus. Well, that brings us to the end of the book, Absolute Surrender by Andrew Murray, friends. Next time, we'll be taking a look at a book by Watchman Nee titled Love Not the World, which is the next step in our spiritual growth as we've learned our way on the road to Calvary We've discovered what humility is and how to allow it to work in our lives. We've now come to an understanding and a place where we can be absolutely surrendered unto our Lord Jesus. And all of these being an inner work of grace within us, now we want to see the outer work of grace 
within our lives. And in order to understand that, as I said, we'll look at a book entitled Love Not the World, or we could say, Touch Not the Unclean Thing. Well, friends, I trust that you've been blessed through this reading today. I pray that as you have examined your hearts and you've been challenged in many ways, that you will bow humbly before the Lord Jesus and in full and absolute surrender, you will let him begin to do his work in you so that when people see you, they see Jesus. When people hear you, they hear Jesus. And when people listen to you, they're listening to the voice of Jesus. Now, as he wills, and until next time, friends, I so truly love you. I'll see you on the next video. Thank you.